And what a lot of times farriers want to do is they want to stand the horse up thinking that they're going to relieve the pressure on this ligament. But what actually happens is the opposite of what they're intending. Watch what happens to this joint right here when I increase the angle of the hoof wall. If I increase the angle of the hoof wall, this joint will drop. What happens is that we are increasing the length of the limb. And that extra length needs to be compensated for somewhere in the limb. It's compensated for in the fetlock. The fetlock always drops when you increase the angle of the hoof. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to forge a shoe that's really wide in the toe and narrow in the heels. And this will allow the horse, when he steps in deep dirt, for the heels to sink and for the toe to stay on the ground. Watch what happens when the heels sink into the ground to the angle of my pastors and my fetlock. They straighten up. And when they straighten up, it relieves tension on the suspensory ligament. So we hope you enjoy the process today. We'll film everything from pulling the shoe to building the, the new shoe that we're going to put on and nail it on. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so we started at 12 inches. Now we're down to just over 10. So almost two inches into this toe. I'm gonna start shaping up this toe and create some width right here. Then we'll draw out our branches, finish up this shoe. So I've got kind of a basic shape. My heels are starting to draw down. I left a lot of material in the toe. I can still make this wider. My toe's pretty thick, but I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot to finish up this shoe. This is more for my own personal development. I'm gonna try to put a clip on this shoe. It's called a master lock clip. I'm just kind of pushing material to the outside of my shoe. Because I still have quite a bit there. Like I said, that little point, I'm going to draw that down into a clip. I'm just kind of scratching in a line right now for my crease. I'm not going to follow this line directly, but I do like to have some sort of line there as a point of reference when I'm fullering.
guys want to come in a little bit closer, we can talk about this shoe. So this is what it's going to look like on the bottom side. And uh, the idea behind it, like I said in the beginning, is we want those heels. So if this is how the horse is standing right now, we want those heels to sink in the ground and straighten up that pastern and fetlock. And that relieves pressure on the suspensory ligament. So the bottom of the shoe, what it's going to do is this wide web here in the toe is going to allow it to float in uh, deep dirt and these he drawn out heels will hopefully sink a little bit. Now this shoe really doesn't do anything on hard dirt or on a road. This shoe is designed for horses that are working in uh, some sort of footing that's going to give a little bit. So we'll go ahead and nail it up and finish up. We're all done with this foot. Uh, we decided just to go with four nails because this horse is uh, just a pasture ornament. He doesn't get around that much anymore. So we're just gonna, and he never pulls the shoes. Four nails will be plenty with the toe clip. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom. Like I said, we left some width at the toe. Kind of help his toe float deep dirt and we drew these heels down we even beveled this outside branch to really let them sink in the ground to relieve the suspensory ligament.